It is the 3rd of December 2022 and you are listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And we're back with another episode of The Future of Photography. Today it's me and Aid. Hey, how's it going? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I've uh, it's Saturday, and you know I've had a hectic week, but got out and played some sport today, and it's all good fun, I think. And it's Christmassy, Lovely. isn't it? And uh, you know, is uh, first of December. What's, first of what's December. What's the weather like? <laughs> uh, well, the, the weather's just not too bad. Where's the here, snow? Actually. Yeah, there's <laughs> no snow here. But the first of December, you know, do take the kids to school, and the first thing they do is put Christmas songs on karaoke and put us in Santa mode. <laughs> And that makes, yeah, okay. I, and I think it's different. We, I don't have kids around. I think it's very different when you have kids around and they are all excited. I'm just like old and jaded. So Do you know what? That's... Put Santa mode on. You can't, you can't help but smile when you're driving around and your car looks like Santa's sleigh. And this year, I don't know if it was the same last year because we haven't had the Christmas update. Santa so mode this has is been the Tesla around podcast, in the, in the Tesla. <laughs> this is the Tesla podcast, but forget it. We'll, we'll get to photography in a minute. This stuff is All important. other cars turn into reindeers. Yeah. This is the car. Yes. Yeah, so the car on the screen turns into Santa's sleigh and it's pulled by a reindeer. All the other cars, as Chris has just said, turn into reindeers. Uh, which is awesome. And every time you use the indicators, the signalers, they sound like sleigh bells. <laughs> and uh, you, you have, it's, it's mandatory that you have to put a Santa hat on while driving yourself. You know? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I'll have uh, to get my Santa, I have to dig the Santa yeah. hats out. I haven't done that bit yet. But I, yeah. at least for five minutes until the bells get really annoying, uh, <laughs> it just puts a massive smile on your face. And the kids sing Christmas songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can, I can see that. I can see that. I Loads of good that. Christmas songs on the karaoke as well. Oh well, Christmas. Yeah, Christmas coming closer, but we have, we I think we have a couple of episodes left before that. And today we want to talk about the future of photography, not just as the name of the podcast. But I had an epiphany. I think I know what the future of photography is. Finally. So you've been teasing this, right, for the yeah, last later, ten, ten later, minutes later. or more. You've been teasing me this, and yeah. So, for, so get yeah. Just a little bit before the big red button for recording was pushed. Chris was saying to me, "Oh, it just came to me." Yeah, and now I'm imagining you've had some kind of vision or epiphany really. or something like that. Not really, but but I've 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 seen like a path that might take us to something that is uh, sort of a bit more exciting. So well, anyway, anyway, well, I'll leave it. I'll leave this as a cliffhanger. Let's talk about a couple of other things. <laughs> AI, of course, AI is still with us, um, and we've been talking about image generating AIs here on the show uh, over and over and over again. And uh, some people have tried, some people have played with it, and some people have found out that yeah, you know, the, the prompt building isn't that easy as it sounds. Um, um, there is one thing that uh, has happened not too long ago or has come out too long ago, and that is um, one of the image generators in the new version, Midjourney version 4. And Midjourney is, uh, yeah, it came out about the same time as DALI 2 came out, the first one that was accessible to the public. Midjourney was also accessible around the same time for a closed beta group. I was part of that group and I played with it and it was cool. And uh, Midjourney just um, released version 4, which I don't know what kind of magic they do, but when you throw in a super simple prompt, it with with most image generators, let's say stable diffusion, because that's open source, if you put in a simple prompt, uh, uh, an example is an otter on a plane using Wi-Fi. That's an example, and I'm, I'm talking, I'm saying that because th there's an example thread on... Uh, on Twitter of someone who did just that. And in Midjourney version three, the results were, yeah, kind of mediocre. I mean, it was clearly an otter. It was clearly air related, but... It looks m mostly looks like it's flying, but it's not really a particularly coherent picture, is it? Um, exactly. The most, co the most coherent one is the one where the otter is perched on the end of the wing. <laughs> if you throw that exact same prompt into Midjourney version 4, you get this. That's astonishing. And that is astonishing. We're looking at 
an otter. We're looking at four pictures for different versions of an otter sitting in an airplane seat, clearly inside an airplane, um, holding something like an iPad or a laptop or something along those lines. Yeah, it's over this one. It looks like a magazine, one that looks like a book. That yeah. it, And it looks like it's a, what is it? it's sort of a pencil kind of drawing. I'm not quite sure what style that is, but that is, um, that's quite astonishing because that's definitely the inside of an airplane, right? And it's definitely an airplane style seat in at least two of the right. four images or, or however many images there so are. they are they are they are doing they are, they have an in, it, i mean the entire field of visual ai has has been growing like crazy for the last well visually for us to see for the last 90 days let's say two three months maybe um but of course behind the scenes this has been going on for a long time um and they are just they are just improving uh here's some examples like uh, otters fighting a medieval duel Right, so nice. these these are otters in uh, in a uh, in they have chainmail on and stuff and sabers and swords and one well, looks like he's holding a guitar. <laughs> I think it's just this is armor. It's a shield. It's I a think shield. It's a, it's a shield, I guess. Um, here's otter physicist lamenting the invention of the atomic bomb, <laughs> which is an interesting concept. And you see an otter looking, being looking worried in. The background there's a there's a mushroom cloud going off that kind of stuff crazy crazy stuff here's a prompt otter inventing the airplane in 1905 and it does look like an old version of an airplane with an otter flying in it on it or last but not least otters playing chess in the fall I'm a bit worried now. I think we should stop reintroducing otters in the wild. I think they're, they're, they're clearly there's a, there's a plan to take over the world here, isn't there, by the otters? There's there's a reason this is happening inside an AI and not in the world. So, But do you see the, the advancement that's happening here? That, uh, so, uh, uh, yes, uh, absolutely astonishing. Um, are we able to put a link to that tweet thread? Yes, you have, sorry, in, in the show in the notes. Show so we'll make it's sure that, that gets into the show notes because yeah. uh, that is really you know, a proper big step change from that version three to version four, quite yes. something. Yes, it is. And it is, uh, yeah, it, some people would say it's worrying because, of course, these AI tools have up to now been at a point where it was really hard work to get a good result. I mean, we're talking about prompt engineering. You put a prompt in, it spits something out and you go, ah, that person has too many limbs. I need yeah, to. Je Jeremiah that. has spent a lot of time on prompt oh, engineering, me too. hasn't he? Oh, have me you too. Have as well? Me yeah. too. And, I've, and I, have, I have released a, a, a bunch of like the the weirder results actually i'm uh, putting a link in here for the show notes as well uh it's at 3023.1 oh no yeah that's that. that's 3023.1 that's uh one as in mm -hmm. o n e mm -hmm. uh 3023.1 gets you to a little gallery and i've deliberately put some of the more crazy weird results on there um so some I, of them you, are... you, so when I had a look at this, because you sent me this a little while ago, didn't you? A couple, a few days ago. So, it, or you know, really interesting stuff there. Um, it looks good. You've clearly spent a lot of time and effort doing this stuff. It's uh, and good results. Interesting stuff. But but I've also I've also allowed some serendipity, some some accidental results. I mean, we're we're looking at um, we're we're looking at some very weird. Uh, things coming out, and I've, I've I've looked at like a retro futuristic dystopia kind of thing here in black and white, and we are looking at weird, weirdly shaped kids in long exposures that have strange contraptions that they carry around, or uh, um, yeah, it's. It, it gives you it gives you a whole lot of room to interpret what you're seeing. So if you are uh, of the let's say more um <laughs> more dark uh inclination it's, then that's easy to uh, that's an easy vessel to put these things into it, it it is it is it's um 
you sent me this the other day and I, I i then went to lex the the gpt3 backed word processor and got it to generate some positive text about living yeah. in the year 3023 so that so that we have some kind of balance and you and and, and there was a really nice very very positive star trek like futuristic version where everyone has a replicator and no one has any needs or it was it was it was very like it was, yes it butterfly was. and flowers and things so well, this is the it, this is the it, counterbalance to that <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's, there's a, a question that I mean, I know we, we, we end up on this podcast often painting a relatively dystopian future view, don't we? Easy, but easy. Yeah, it, it, it's easy enough to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, although we're all still here. So that's good. Um, but the what is it that? Yeah, what is it that drives you to to the dystopian rather than I suppose the opposite would be the utopian, wouldn't it? I well, for first of all, I do not desire to live in such a world. Um, this is a purely artistic endeavor. Um, I like decay. I've done my share of urban exploration, going into buildings that are have been unused for 50 years um, with holes in the roof and in the floors and things. Um, so you, and you work with the government like I do. That's that. Those are still open and <laughs> they're, they're the I office buildings the, you work in. I don't work in the, with the government. I know you don't. No, no. I don't. Um, but I had a run in a couple of times with the government for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, nev nothing ever happened, but um, I was thrown out of a building by a very stern looking person once. So um, I, I I don't know what it is, but I find in I find it I like the feeling of I don't know nature taking back what we built. Um, if you know Tarkovsky's movies, um, there's a lot of that in those where you'll find these derelict buildings and you'll find uh, trees growing inside a room mm. and that kind of stuff. And uh, and uh, when I visited Ireland, I loved the old cottages that were in 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 ruins. Yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. uh, from a visual point of view, you know, it's a photographic thing. It's it's an artistic thing and. I find that a certain amount of that's not even destruction. It's a, a certain amount of mm, of unorder, of dis disarray is um, is interesting. It's very is visually very interesting to me. Mm. So that's that's why I came up with these kind of in air quotes photos. Ah. Which look like photos. I mean, they they do look like photos, right? They so so the the style for that is there that um you know, they don't get the chance to follow uh, the the link in the show notes just yet. Um, it reminds me of um, it, it, I guess a period of time, sort of ju journalistic war photography from between about nineteen thirty nine and about nineteen seventy. So, which would inc incorporate. Perhaps that they were certainly the, the the Second World War, the Vietnam War, and stuff like that. The, some of this stuff is is reminiscent. Um, if you well, if you could squint the, at it, of Vietnam War photography, for example. With the main difference that this plays in the year thirty twenty three, that's where yes. the title comes from, and uh, so it's a retro futuristic look at how things might be. And of course, the the we discussed this in our in our little chat room, and uh, I think we. we Jeremiah and I, and I think you too, we played a bit with the idea, and I ended up, um, I ended up with the idea that wait, wait a minute, this could be, this could be twenty twenty three. No, this this could be all <laughs> virtual because we are looking at a more and more virtual future. So maybe these are beings. I'm not saying human. <laughs> These are beings that might just be not there, but they might be imagined by a big AI somewhere in the cloud. You know. Oh, we could have all uploaded ourselves to the to the cloud by then, couldn't we? We might yeah. be. The, yeah, we may have transcended <laughs> the human race. Well, like, it, it, might, it may have transcended. I'd like yes. to think that if we did like live in a virtual world, though, we'd make a nice virtual world. <laughs> well, and and I, and I and I don't mind. I don't mind a nice, beautiful garden and. Everything that comes with it, you know, it's 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 it's, it's two sides. 
Yeah, I mean, if you think about a spectrum of virtual reality from Call of Duty to Animal Crossing, right? <laughs> I think yeah. I'd probably be, I'd prefer to be closer to Animal Crossing where everybody just goes around to each other's tent and makes a meal together. That's, that yeah. sounds nice. I, th I think, I think you need a dose of uh, Andrei Tarkovsky's movies <laughs> just for, uh, for an adjustment. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we... so yeah, I, I think, I think we are, we are, I mean, the developments today and we are really very early in all these developments uh, shows us that the visual arts are, uh, maybe not directly moving into that virtual direction, but the virtual part is going to be part of it. In, it already is part of it. There will be more of that the same way uh, where at one time painting was the thing and then photography came along and photography carved out its niche, which then became bigger and bigger. And now painting is more of a more of a, a hobby and there aren't that many professional painters anymore but uh, there are more professional photographers now so, so let, let me yeah. ask you this then um uh, of course there, there's a, a there's the universal philosophical uh, philosophical argument that there's no such thing as a new idea and that, uh, and that certainly in the creative arts that everything is derived from something if only your latent set of experiences right mm -hmm. um with ai is it is it the case that it, that the art is literally derived? So so yes, you create a prompt, but the AI can only build based upon what it's been trained on at this point. At this point, that that is very true. We are looking at um, interpolation right now. We're looking at mm. uh, the ah, AI that's... taking things and building thing new things out of that. Maybe things that we haven't seen before, but that are based on the existing stuff. So I like that you said that. So you said interpolation, which of course is the op is aligned to, but different from extrapolation, where you are actually going beyond the data set and creating something new. So right. interpolation being its creation within the data set is it, it may it may well be yeah creative but, but still, for some definition of creative, but it's not. But, but, but it's within the known data set. It's not taking it beyond anything else. It is, but still, the pictures that I have made using the AI have they have not existed before. They are new. They are That's different the, yeah, from what point. has been very around. Good. They remind you of things, um, but they are their own thing. So, in that respect, I'm. I mean, and then there are true artists that come up with something brand new, something completely different, mm. and that happens every now and then. Someone comes along and just turns the whole thing on its head and then you have something new i don't think the ai can do this yet right so 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 we have we have um we have a kind of at the on the lowest level an averaging like the ai might might have learned how 50,000 uh, men look like and then it can make you an average man out of that Mm. So it's an averaging thing. And then there's the as, extrapolation. As long as your data set that you've trained it on was representative, of course. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, this is always uh, the inherent bias of the data sets is always a problem, of course. Yes. But, uh, but Which is going to get worse, by the way, because... Well, you know, you know what's going to happen. Okay, this is... I think we lost about 70% of the nah, listeners at this point. But mind. hey, we're just having fun. Um, th what, what's going to happen is, of course, that the training data that we have right now, that training data, I mean, it comes from the Lion data set, which is uh, 50, 500 billion pictures from, well, that's quite controversial where they all come from, but that's not what we want to talk about here. Um, but it's a huge data set and uh, there will be new models will be trained. Are we looking at Mid Journey 4 right now? That is a new model. There's uh, Stable Diffusion 2 just came out as a new model. So there's constant new training of new models going on. And of course, that training data will be more and more in a, in a sort of a feedback loop because a lot of the training data will come from AI-generated stuff more and more. So we it, will have it, will. it mixed in with the rest of the data set we will have ai generated stuff mixed in to its own training data well the, so the in, so it's even worse than that sadly is let's say you have uh let's say you you want to 
um, find somebody in a city or something like that. Um, and you train the AI that runs your city CCTV network on the mm -hmm. people that live in the city. Now, if you have good coverage, you could get a, an initial starting database for uh, for training your AI that was representative of the people that you live in your city. So that's that's okay as long as there's all the people that this go is, out this and about. Is, this and is just making the hairs of my back stand up because it's so, against but what all happens the data over protection. Time is, that is so. Yeah. So that then you put that AI into service and it learns from data that it picks up over time and it learns behaviors and those behaviors will be inherently biased because you know, most people might be good people but the bad people are going to you know they, they, they will have a different uh, a different demographic balance because but by the very nature of them being a subset right uh, uh, of the the city's population and then yeah so so there is a very real risk that as the ai learns from its own experiences even with real uh, yeah, even with real m images and even with um imagery that is consistently and continually refreshed um there is a very uh very high risk of, of positive feedback loops leading to to bias um oh yes it's and i'm not um i i also know that there are a lot of people working hard to figure out what this all means because that, that that i work with people that do that uh, you know i work with people who are who look very strongly and, and work very hard on the ethics of ai so it, it but it is um it's not just it's not just sort of spiraling down into your own data set as an AI, even with it external has, data feeds, continuous data feeds. You it has effects, yes. Thing. So Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, there are dangers. And uh, um, I'm, if you ask me, I'm all for regulation of AI. And I'm all for otters on airplanes reading on their Kindles. I think that's that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, AI. It's visual. It's visually going to change us, and this is where we come to the future of photography. Because um, oh, do tell me, what does this? Well, hang on, hang on. What does this mean for the future of photography, Chris? <laughs> well, it, uh, it, I think it has a direct. It will have a direct impact um, when we're looking at these image generators right now. If you give them a prompt they generate an image. There's also image to image where you feed it an image and have it make do a style transfer. Like you can put in a photo and say, make this a medieval painting or make this a, a stained glass uh, piece of art or make this into a sculpture or a, uh, make, make this in, in the style of Picasso or whatever. You have these possibilities with AI. So, um, and these things are getting more, they run on more and more devices. So um, right now you need a, like a bunch of big GPUs to run some of these things. Um, they have uh, slimmed it down without quality loss to run on a home GPU, as in if you're a gamer, you probably have a GPU that can generate these images pretty fast, especially stable diffusion, because that's open source, you can run it right at home. Um, I can now run this home this whole thing on my Apple Silicon M2 MacBook Air. It's not super fast, but it works. So under a minute for a picture, it's fairly okay. Um, and I can now run this on my iPhone. Ooh. There is an implementation where it runs on device on my iPhone, not on the cloud. I can be completely wow. offline and generate images with stable diffusion too. And uh, that is wow. mind blowing. So. This is an this is and this is a development that has happened in the last three months. From does this it, mean that I'm never going to have to pay for parking ever again? Because if the parking attendant ever comes to question me, I can just AI generate a parking ticket on my phone and go, "No, there you go, I booked one." <laughs> no, you can you can generate a, a photo of a different car in this car parking spot and say, "You know, for the last two hours, I made, I took a picture. This is a different car. It's not mine. Trust Even the better. machine. <laughs> no more parking <laughs> fees ever again. All parking That's, tickets." That's probably true. So we are we are we are looking at um, at a future, I believe, where cameras are going to have this built in, and you point your camera at a scene, and it'll run in real time. So you point this at the scene, and where you now have your camera set to black and white, and your display shows you the black and white version of that color in front of it, you will have the Picasso painting version of it on your camera. You will have the medieval painting. You will have the stained glass uh, thing on your display. You can photograph in any style you like and it'll output a high quality I'm sure image I'm, 
I'm sure spot. I've seen some stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I, I may be making this up, but I'm sure I've seen something that was able to do a sort of Van Gogh sort of swirly style. I think, it, yes, yes, I think, and I think it is very, very plausible at this point that this is going to be in our camera sooner or later. Probably not in our Canon, Nikon, <laughs> Sony, <laughs> yeah. Olympus cameras, but I in can't. our cameras in our pockets the I can't see it on the Canon the, product roadmap I really just can't. imagine Carl the Canon of, no of course Canon would would give you five different modes one is the Picasso mode one is the medieval mode and one is the I don't know <laughs> the, yeah. the the tintype mode and then you have a, a collodion tintype I go um, the other way right these are Japanese companies they should have anime modes and, oh yeah that will uh, definitely like, be part of it and yeah. it will change they, the people in the really picture exist. into anime but characters have yes. you got a snapchat account so no, I don't so my, my daughter uh, loves snapchat and and all of this just happens yeah, you know, right now, and yes, it's not very high fidelity, obviously. But these they will, life filters are, are they, amazing. They will put their everything. rabbit ears on people yeah. in real time, right, and yeah. things like that. Um, and uh, the yeah, and so it, and that's in video. So that's not just in um, that's not just in photo and still photography. It would do that in real time in video. Um, and so I think there's there's uh, some some of that is is already come to pass. Um, but uh, it's it's going to be yeah in interesting times ahead. But so so I is that so so if if you use it, let's say you use a a Picasso or a Van Gogh filter or or who yeah whoever your favourite you know, uh, painter is, great master painter is, um great. That's clearly not photography, right? Nobody's pretending that that's photography. Although the source input might be something that is a photograph captured by your phone, but that, that well, you that, could that, you could have you could have that thing transform your photography into Ansel Adams style into any other photographer who's in the data set. You know, so, so, that's, still so this is where I was going it? to get. This was going to be my question. Is like what? So what? Imagine that scenario. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't just help listening. putting ears on. Chris my is head clearly now. mucking around with his OBS virtual camera as we set up, and he's now got ears like like furry ears from a cat. Well, that's <laughs> the first one I found in Snap Camera, which runs on it, it which runs computer. on yeah computers. So, um, so the um, I can't concentrate now. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> but what happens when you this is uh, a photorealistic output? Do we? Uh, do we still do, call it a photo? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so and and yeah, you know, all the arguments that yeah we could rehearse. Yeah, you know, yes, people have been manipulating photos since the dawn of photography, right? And that's yeah, you know, the very nature of photography includes manipulation of images. Yeah, so so that's all good. And um, you know, there's uh, yeah, there there are standards around journalism, for example, on journalistic photography. But that's again is you know um, there, there's we're not talking about journalism here i don't think so we're talking about more creative endeavors um so what is do, do we still call that photography or do we just talk call it digital art in your future of photography that you have seen the future is there such a thing as photography sure or do we need a new word I, people people still ride horses so of course there's photography. Photography is not going to go away anywhere. It's it's just changing. And uh, if and and we are looking at photos these days that come out of cameras that have already been manipulated. If you let your camera do a conversion to whatever, if you have a Fuji camera and you have an Astia or a, or a Velvia filter on it, then uh, your photo has been manipulated. If you have any camera these days, the and and uh, any modern camera these days. Uh, then the camera will fix geometric distortions introduced by a cheaper lens. Uh, it will in increase the quality. Even Hasselblads do that. Even Leicas do that. So um, that is already part of it. And yes, you could argue these are all like there to make the picture better. If you if you take a picture with a smartphone these days, they do semantic segmentation. They seg segment the photo into different parts. There is a uh, it recognizes this is the grass. It should be a bit greener. This is the sky. Let's make it a bit pop more. Uh, this is a face. We want to have the skin tone a bit nicer and the light in the eyes a bit brighter and this kind of stuff. is happening already in oh, your yeah. smartphones um, when you take a photo. That's 
the reason why taking pictures with a smartphone, the, the, the results look good generally because the, the phone is doing a whole lot of work for you that you are very likely not aware of. Is that still okay? So where does it start? This is where do we draw the line? <laughs> oh, let's not go down that rabbit hole. Don't worry. The, the internet can have that conversation for us. We don't need to do that. But anyway, I, I, do, I, do, I don't think we need to finish that conversation. No, let's, no, let's, let's plant move. this in people's minds and have everyone think about it. So, so in, in your vision of the future of photography, uh, did you have any thoughts on the future of social media and photographers linking together about That's photography? A nice at all? segue. Very slick. <laughs> I, I've done a few podcasts, maybe not as many as you, but I've done a few podcasts at this point. Um, the social, social media landscape is changing. Of course, it's always changing. Um, and uh, right now we're seeing yet another big change uh, introduced by uh, someone buying something <laughs> yeah so 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 tw twitter is seeing a bit of a loss of people not i don't think too much to be honest but um a lot of people have opened mastodon accounts lately because yeah. they are looking for uh, for a, re a refuge somewhere. Well, a refuge that... is a really good word, isn't it? Because, yeah, yes, Twitter, as we record this in late 2022, Twitter is in, let's just say it's a state of flux. If, <laughs> if we don't need to dive down that rabbit hole today. Um, but the, you know, I, I know plenty of photographers who have had really bad experiences on Twitter, especially female photographers, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the, Twitter has been a pretty aggressive environment um, we're, we're for conversations around photography. Now, I have to say personally, I, I'm very been very lucky. I haven't suffered from that, although my participation in these conversations is very minimal. Um, but it's uh, yeah, there's there's always something, right? And again, without going down a rabbit hole, there's one going on this week as we record this. This is about photographs of snow leopards, right? So. Um, the but the mastodon uh, and i have i am absolutely one of those people who recently created a mastodon account i know you've had one for years and years and years but hey you did podcasting before there was itunes so you know you're you're just our you're you're, you're the, the guy that leads the way for the rest of us right so i try i try you do you do very well you do more than try you do very very well indeed um so the yeah so uh, and there's a lot of people posting on mastodon uh, which for those that haven't looked at it looks a lot like twitter but there's a lot of people posting hey be nice right hey yo do um do the equivalent of retweet which on mastodon is called a boost um you know do do share this and like it and and boost it and and you know let's let's have the conversation about being nice to each other so that's an interesting thing that's happening at the moment right so so um I'm on Mastodon. You're on Mastodon. Mm -hmm. um, I lo know a lot of people uh, have moved to Mastodon. And just, just for those who, well, moved. I've not moved. I added Mastodon as one additional social media. I'm still on Twitter. I'm still doing the things. Yes, uh, me too. TFOP yes. now will still be on Twitter. So, um, But uh, as a photographer, so um, I was, I moved there. Well, again, didn't move. I added it uh, maybe five years ago. Um, I think there was one of those one of those earlier outrage waves of people leaving Twitter because <laughs> something happened that I've completely forgot about. I don't know what it was. Um, but um, so Ma Mastodon, I, I, I heard a very good explanation or a very good, um, yeah, very good explanation for what it is. It's like, like um, you could e either have the big marketplace and everyone is there and shouts at each other. To get attention, or yeah. you could have a whole bunch of neighborhood pubs, and people I go like a to these pub. pubs. I like, that. I like right? that picture. Yeah, people go to these pubs, and there is a pub keeper, the the owner of the pub, who makes the rules for the pub, and uh, there might be a pub that says no politics in here. That might be a big sign at the door and says, if you come in here, hey, if you talk about politics, go go to the pub at the other corner. Mm -hmm. Not here, um, and Mastodon is a bit like that. It's it's uh, not one big server that you're on. You're on multiple, or you're on you're on one of those in one of those neighborhood pubs, and talk to the people who also are in that pub, and they might agree with you, they might not agree with you, but it's your choice 
which pub you go to and uh, which people you talk to there. And that's pretty much what Mastodon is. They call it an instance. So there is an instance somewhere uh, and there's someone who runs that instance. That's your pub keeper. And uh, there's, for some instances, so there are a few rules. For some, there are not. And um, the whole thing can, all these instances can talk to each other. That's where, the, that's where this picture breaks down because um, you let me, could... Let me take over then. Let me take over yeah. uh, for, for a moment. So, so yeah, so that's really, it's really interesting. And, and, and I think what I, was, what I was hoping to talk about just for the next minute or two is my own personal experience having done this recently. And I wonder if Absolutely. a bunch of our listeners may be thinking about this or going through this right now. So you're absolutely right. And and the whole thing about, you know, which group do I want to join? Which pub do I want to go into? Um, that, I think, th there's a risk there that it creates a bit of a barrier to entry because, yeah, and, and so I wanted to talk about that a little bit because when I dug into it and I was thinking, oh, dear, which which one do I join, right? Which community do I join? Because it's uh, my initial th thinking or my initial thought, my initial feeling was that that might be in some way restrictive. But you're absolutely right. It's not. So what you can do is you can join any mastodon community um and uh there's two or three things that are about that one is that you can choose one where the in the local community and you can filter your feed in mastodon to, th to look locally or, or more broadly um you can choose to join one where there are people who have similar interests in in discussion that you do so you could choose to join a photography one for example um the the but then you know, my thought was, oh, am I going to miss out on other things? Or what if I'm not on the same one that all my friends are on? And, and am I still going to be able to talk to them? But actually, you can. You can follow each other across services, servers, and that then creates a network connection, and you can see all, all of that, and you can you can choose to participate in the global feed or more or less. Go on, Chris. You can move. That's the very important That was going to be here. my next point. Oh, sorry, well. sorry. Then no, 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 it's good because you get, the pub analogy works really well because not only you're not picking a pub for life, right? You know, this is not a one shot thing. Um, you can actually move your Mastodon presence um, between the pubs. Uh, and, you know, it's still you. It's not that you have to cancel a subscription, or you cancel an account and reopen another one. You can actually move them around. Um, so you can actually and you do... will keep you will keep your followers that is the yes. important thing because for a lot of people that is where the value is that how many people follow me what's my reach and if you if you pack up in one and say okay this is probably not the right place for me there's too many idiots here move to another one um, then you will take your followers with you won't I've been take to a your... few pubs like that in my time actually yes <laughs> <laughs> you won't take your history with you like your post history is lost but you will keep your network and that mm. is that's great Yes, absolutely. So people, you, people won't lose sight of you just because you've gone. And I think that's yeah. so for me that those two things, the fact that you're not just restricted to talking in the local community and that you can move in between communities and have different conversations. Those two things drastically reduce the barrier to entry. So I wanted to share right. that information as somebody who had to learn that firsthand very recently as part of the current wave of exodus from Twitter, or at least adding rather than ex uh, yeah, exiting um, the. The other thing um, that I wanted to, to say, and I, 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 which is really interesting, is that there is, um, as well as following people uh, at, a, at a global basis, you can follow hashtags. Um, and that gives you the opportunity to join conversations with people that you've never met and wouldn't be in your network. So um, now this is, I don't know if Twitter has this functionality. I've never found it in Twitter. So, uh, and when I saw it in Mastodon, I did went go back and look, but maybe I'm just not very good at Twitter. I don't know. But I think you there's can, clients that can do that, but oh, I'm it? not okay, sure sorry. it's part of the base uh, Twitter. Ah, right. So, so if you use like a tweet deck or something, you can subscribe Possibly to yes. a hashtag. Ah, right. That, that kind of makes some sense. But the... The, the interesting thing for me there is you can choose you know, what subjects you're interested in. You can search on hashtags and you can see how you know, where they're being used and, and how many people are posting. And you can follow that in and, and just in the web client, you can follow that. And it creates um, it creates the, sorry, it adds those things to your main feed. Um, oh, by the way, the main feed, there's no, there's no adverts in it. Um, you can contribute to the running of your own local community if you want to. But, you know, the, the, uh, I, 
that that will all be different it could be a patreon type model it could be something else but you can you, know, you can do that uh, but there's no ads uh, there's no algorithm that decides what you see either you, you construct your feed the things you're interested in and it just simply does it on a time basis so you see the most recent ones at the top of your feed oh um, and and if and if things get too wild for you like in twitter if you hear too many think too much about a certain topic that i don't know gives you rage then It's difficult to not see that in Twitter. In Mastodon, you can block posts from like entire other instances if you want to. Let's say there's oh, a there's a that. Mastodon community and it's full of idiots and you don't want to hear from them. You can in your profile say no. Just don't show me any any posts from that instance oh, and okay. then that is gone for you. So it's 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 very it's it's an interesting thing and Here comes the next interesting bit. It's called well the, the whole uh, the whole uh, thing is called the Fediverse, as in federated yes. universe. Like that's a federation, but that has a reason. It's not just a whole bunch of Mastodon instances, but it's it has an underlying protocol that other things will and do already link into. We're talking about a blogging infrastructure, for example, that uses the same protocol or um, a photography site called pixelfed.social, which is um, has set out to be something like Instagram. So we are looking at a photography community that, that uses the same protocol, but uses it to share photos and do interesting things with photography. And there's interaction, and there's, um, there's uh, comments, and there's all sorts of things about photos where where you get to see nice photos post your photos and others can see it and uh, then you can you can not only be on pixel fed but you can now subscribe to a photo stream from pixel fed in your mastodon instance because it speaks the same protocol the same language in the background It's, this is really interesting the fediverse thing once i um figured out what the word actually meant um you know, it was, is a really interesting concept because i think i've heard Uh, this week that Tumblr are going to integrate yes. to the Fediverse as well. Um, now, I don't know any... I haven't got any details about that at the moment. Um, I don't know, Chris, if you know anything more about that. Um, I don't, but um, let me bring up a picture here just, just to give you a bit of an idea. Um, so who uh, knew what? Tumblr would make a comeback? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tumblr yeah. Was, I, was, I was always... I always th thought Tumblr was a brilliant platform in terms of what scope it gave you to do because you could post videos you could post text you could post photographs and and each type of post was kind of a different model and and it would behave differently but in a good way if you um, go if you go to oh, wikipedia wow. and Got look it. for the fediverse you will see this picture which is the main the many branches of the fediverse and macedon is one of them there is a whole bunch of different uh more and <laughs> more more or less accessible things including nextcloud being part of it and speaking that language and so on so there's there's a mm, whole bunch of different things that um talk on that same protocol which is called activity pub just in case you come across that and uh it yeah it, it's opening up an entire new world with alternative services that are run by uh, different communities um Is it the same as Twitter? No, it's not. Is it? Better? Can it replace it in a certain <laughs> aspect? It can. I've, uh, I've, I find that the social interactions, the conversations I have on Mastodon, um, I do have more interaction on Mastodon, even though I only have like a tenth of the followers that I have on Twitter. So yeah, I think that the, I think it, it, the 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 experience you get i guess depends compared to twitter would depend upon your usage of twitter wouldn't it so if you were a, yes. a journalist using it to scour the global news feeds and pull together oh mastodon is not for you then Ma no. Ma mastodon is no. not going to do that for you but in no. terms of uh you know how it is that you might be able to interact with people um uh, and and you know build communities perhaps on it then then i think you know it is Uh, already at least as capable of doing that as Twitter is, albeit it doesn't have quite so many people on it, of course. But um, as people start to create Mastodon accounts and start to experience it, if it does manage to keep its it, it, its libertarian tendencies, um, and if it does manage to keep its, I mean, um, dep depends on the on the on the instance you go to. 
so right. so yeah i hadn't meant that sorry that's very bad so that's a word that wouldn't mean quite perhaps the same in british english as it would do in american english so forgive me um it, it, i didn't mean libertarian as in you know the the american political view of the world of, of a libertarian i meant more in the sense of you know actually the the, 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 the freedom, freedom to be independent freedom right and, and and to make your own rules and of course you know they're they you know one of the you mentioned you know mastodon instances setting their own rules one of them of course is is no hate speech no you know um no being nasty to other people um and so uh, and yeah that's an that's an interesting thing and uh, perhaps a very valuable thing in its own right as well um so so we are on mastodon we are on mastodon yes and you can follow us the 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 links to our mastodon profiles are in the show notes so if you are if you are one of the people who thought uh, might want to take a look at mastodon yeah I think Go we should, ahead. and come and follow. Yes, so I, I've actually made my Mastodon address uh, my pick of the week this week. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, please, uh, it'll be in the show notes. Um, come and join Mastodon, uh, and and come and join the conversation. Um, I'm trying to make an effort to to share a little bit more uh, there than I would do in Twitter, where I, it, it always seems a bit of a yeah. Twitter's a, a bit of a fire hose, isn't it? As they say, and. Uh, uh, so let me see. Um, I'm just I'm just opening our Mastodon profiles as we speak. Um, no, I'll only show yours because mine. I'm, I'm logged into mine. You're not supposed to see all this, but here's your official Mastodon profile. Hooray! Uh, there we go. Yeah, sharing stuff. So I've joined. You can talking. see here for people looking yep. at the video. I've joined a Mastodon instance called Universodon. Um, so once I figured out that actually I didn't need to join a photography instance to be uh, to, to speak about photography because I could you know, join up with photographers wherever I was, uh, I just picked one. To be honest, not um, I, I just went with it and thought, well, if it's not the right one for me, then I can always move. Oh, and look how young you are! Only two weeks old on Mastodon. <laughs> oh, that is so. Adorable. We can't all be, we can't all be ahead of the curve like you are, Chris. You know we can't we can't all be the the, the trend makers and the trend setters. Some no, of us have to good. follow trends. It's fine. Welcome welcome to the Fediverse. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> all right, my pick of the week is um, not photography related, but something that is as mind blowing as some of those uh, AI photo generators are, and that is. Um, OpenAI's new chatbot, which is an AI chatbot, and it is interesting, and it is very capable, and it is almost scary uh, as to what it can do. So um, it's you need a free account there, and it's at chat.openai.com, and it uses the latest language uh, model to give you answers to questions or to write articles for you or to... Uh, to make to make um, a request into a Bible quote or to whatever, there's there's really really interesting things there. I'm not, um, I'm, I'm I'm we're not going to go into any depth, but it is worth a look because I think this is going to be with us in one form or another in the future, as uh, new search engines and new other things. So that's. Yeah, I think we should just start. I, I'm sure there's stuff out there as well. There's already a podcast that is actually written and presented by an AI, isn't there? But I think we should. Uh, oh, several. I, now, think, I yes. think we should try because you can you can use this to write, you know, to write the script or the conversation. You can then, you know, you can sample your own voices in various different bits of software um, at the moment. Um, uh, you know, Adobe have been doing this for, for a while, haven't they? Sort of upload 20 minutes of, of your voice uh, and they can just generate whatever as you from a typewritten script. So we should probably... Um, do you know what we should do, Chris? Right, Because I know you're into automation and workflows and what pe you know, people who listen to this podcast and, and your other podcasts that possibly don't realise just how much automation there is that you build you know, in, in the background. Maybe we should just build an automatic podcast as a project with and just so, so so we so have it generated you know gen generated the script with an ai you know, processed into audio by 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 software send it down an automated pipeline and out into the real world Let's see what happens um that is a bit more involved than you might imagine but it is possible it is definitely possible so uh, i'm not sure i'm ready to pick up a project like that Oh, I, come on, just imagine the, the possibility. I'd rather, I'd rather have, have my automations do some, something that saves me time and not 
to something that takes a lot of my time. Well, you to have build. to set them up. So there is clearly there'd be an investment. But you know, if you get the merchandising right, you know, you could you you could be sitting on the beach sipping pina coladas while your automated podcasts take over the the you know the TFTTF network. <laughs> Okay, podcasters. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just uh, asking GPT, uh, OpenAI's chat, if it has any creative ideas for a podcaster's birthday. So let's let me see. Um, is it is it your birthday? No, no, no. But one of us will have a birthday one That's time. True. So there are many. It says there are many creative ideas for a podcaster's birthday, depending on their interests and preferences. Here are a few suggestions: organize a live recording of their podcast with special guests either in person or over a video call, or put together a special birthday episode of their podcast, or plan a virtual or in-person birthday party for the podcaster with games, art, activities, and fun surprises, or create a special playlist for their favorite songs and dedicate it to them on their birthday. Hmm. So sometimes it <laughs> returns interesting things, but um, it is still mind-blowing. Give it a try we have it uh linked definitely i would definitely be doing that as you know i've been uh i've, I've caught the bug of the, the ai bug but more through the the writing side and the natural language processing side than the image making well, side at the moment so i will uh, we'll have to we'll have to combine this with virtual photography so we'll have this generate prompts for uh mid journey 4 and that will then spit out new photos that we will then use to train a new ai that can then and so on <laughs> all right <laughs> Can that next week can we do like a show about camera bags or something like that yeah the future Very of camera simple, bags Very simple basic <laughs> stuff yeah real like, world like, stuff like gloves for photographers with yeah. flip flip openable fingers to operate your camera and stuff absolutely. like that Absolutely absolutely Oh man I saw this some people is... wearing those the other day at a bird sanctuary taking photos of the birds and uh, yeah of course they had the camo covers on their lenses as well and stuff like that so. they, Of course you need camo covers so the birds don't see you they're yeah, very even when you're in the hide yeah <laughs> Yes they, of course of course it's it's the law All right we will be back with another episode soon until then everyone take care and uh, yeah follow us on the twitters and on the mastodon and see you then everyone bye bye Absolutely. bye